Yeah, I'm getting my river view back. <laughs> yeah, all those leaves. Look at all the leaves. Bill Gowdy, checking in. Here we are in the south east corner of the property. I put in an H support. I put in uh, T posts and every after every two T posts I put in a wooden post. Down the line there. That's just inside. You can see the white post there is the property line. You can see the fence is just inside the property line. Look at all the wood I got down. cameras right there on that tree. We've got that tree, a uh, uh, great big tree cut up. Very well. I had to cut several chunks, but there's the root ball right there. down over here, a ton of wood in here, I had to, a bunch of wood makers had to get pulled down. This is coming up on the right of way. Hill. I don't want to drive a four wheeler down here. So, that tree's not quite on the property line, but there's a big tree down here, so I kind of had to fence around it. Our property line is over to the left a little bit further than what this shows here. We kind of put a little bow in the fence because of this big root ball. I got the fence down to here, and I broke the trailer. I had to fix the trailer. Got the trailer fixed, and now the four-wheelers won't shift. And the temperature, everything's dropping. I think the high today is going to be 40. 
but it got down in the 20s last night, so kind of got out of the mood for work in here. Anyway, there's my fence line. I'm going to try to zoom in here for you. You can see right there, and again, our property line is about 10 foot to the south of that right there. But since it, there's a big tree down right there, and it gets, and our property line gets, actually it's behind those trees. I, I put a stake in over there. Anyway, that's where the fence is going to go. And it goes up the hill. So that I put that post in there. And then you can see from that post it goes on up. That's the uh, prim area right up there. Pretty steep there. I'm going to have to figure out some way to put in a four-wheeler trail once I get the four-wheeler fixed. But uh, So it shifts. It's not shifting now. I, all I got it in second gear. <laughs> Always something in there. So I built this tool holder. I plug it in on the back of the four-wheeler into the hitch and I unspool that wire. It worked out real good. This is the amount, I had to buy one more roll of wire and this is the, I got that and a partial roll left. So I hope I have enough wire to finish the project. I had to buy some more T-posts yeah, I hope I got enough of those too. Another, that's all that, that partial roll of wire right there, and uh, I think there's 20 T posts right there, and a couple extra old ones that I rounded up that I can use. We'll see. This is a trailer I broke. That's actually it was made out of that channel, but. You can see uh, it's not very thick. Well, I, I, I just cut that off and welded that on, welded some supports on there, and made this not a dump trailer. I never used the dump part anyway, but it is solid now. Yeah, with a ball hitch. Before it just had a garden hitch on it, just uh, where you had to use a pin. Well, I use everything on the ball on it. This has Kevin Virgil built this trailer for me originally for my motorcycle and it had a different ball thing on it and I put a heavier duty uh, support and I put a new uh, ball hitch on that uh, extended that and uh, so I can haul wood and stuff on there yeah you know, made that a little more durable I did that while I was doing this so I got two trailers I can pull behind the four-wheeler when and if I get the four-wheeler going. So here's the problem with the four-wheeler. I got it turned on now. That's the oil light. It goes off. Now it's in second gear and it won't shift. It won't shift in either direction. The battery's charged. So what I did is I bypassed the safety switch. I pushed this to the on. That's just a rocker switch. I pushed that to on. When I push it on, it goes to the neutral light. And it bypasses the safety switch on the solenoid. It allows me to push the starter. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> push the start. I got. All right, so I'm pushing the rocker. I got the green light. I got the starter button. Let's see if I can be strong enough. I don't know if that's correct. Finger strong enough. And then I, it actually starts in gear. I don't recommend that. But I, 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 I'm in a bind right now. I had to have that. So I'm loading up and I'm taking it to the shop to fix it. So 
on these electric shift models of the Honda Rancher, they have a, I don't know if you can see it down there, that's the manual shift lever right there. And I use a wrench and it's a number 12. You can put a number 12 winch on it and you can shift it to whatever gear you want. Well, I happen to shift it to second gear because that way I can drive it around. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a pain in the butt. So I'm going to shift gears now and, and uh, have to fix the four wheeler before I can finish the fence. I got the trailers fixed, but now I got to fix the four wheeler. Look at this. I don't know how this is protected and everything, but I don't know how this happened. And I'm assuming that this is my problem right here. I had no shift. This goes down to the uh, shift motor. The, the, um, oh, it's a shift locator. You know, I, I, they call it something. I can't remember what the name is, but it's got a broken wire right there. I'm going to solder that back together and see if, if everything works. Uh, you see that? Hmm. Success. Well, I had it apart. Cleaned up all the brakes. I did uh, a lot of uh, maintenance. But it needs a new CV joint. The boot is bad on uh, one side. And I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't look into changing it yet uh, it's a whole joint is bad if you see this boot it's been bad for a while that boot is what caused the failure but it is still working so guess what I'm going to use it i'm going to use it till it breaks i guess and then i'll You ever notice how life runs in cycles? <laughs> so, you know, all days are good days. Just some days are better than others. I'm telling you. First the trailer's broke. Then the four-wheeler broke. I fixed those trailers. 
now I got the four-wheeler fixed and of course uh, let's see it's 28 degrees outside right now I'm at the shop at least I got a heated shop a place to go to keep warm while I'm fixing those things but now I guess gotta wait to it's supposed to warm up next week so maybe I can get that fence done that's the plan in the meantime it gives me time to get caught up on the computer because I am so far behind tell you what got a smart TV yeah been watching I've been lazy well, I don't know yeah lazy with my YouTube stuff because of that smart TV I can uh, just turn it on and I can watch your videos and but I can't leave comments uh, you know, uh, I'm still using, utilizing the platform and all that, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's not the same as getting on the computer and, uh, or, you know, that, yeah, you know, I just can't keep up. Listen, what would a Bill Gowdy video be without some food? I, I, I've been working on this breakfast recipe and uh, I, I've got it perfected now it was uh, I got a video out called recipe 88 breakfast recipe 88 and I was inspired by uh, somebody on YouTube and I thought well that looks good and he just uh, opened his eggs and I've actually made it uh, it's kind of like an omelet between two tortilla shells and I top it with uh, Texas Pete nowadays. Uh, well, I, I did it in that back in the beginning too, but I topped it with tomato slices. And now I'm using salsa with little Texas Pete on top. Oh, it is so good. And then maybe I'll do a follow-up video on how to do the whole process. All right. Thank you. Thank you much for watching. Bill Gaddy out.